years have passed since the death of Kendrick Johnson. Kendrick went to school with a book bag and he was returned to his parents the next day on a body bag. His body discovered upside down in a gym mat at school. Investigators ruled it an accident. That's what the evidence showed. But his family. My family never asked for nothing but the truth. And many others. No justice! No peace! Don't believe that. He is a liar. Kendrick was murdered at Lyons High School and no one has been held accountable. Will Kendrick Johnson's family ever get closure? And are the answers still out there? Seventeen-year-old Kendrick Johnson still had his life in front of him. High school proms, graduation, marriage, kids of his own. But ten years ago today, some of his Lowndes High School classmates found his body inside a rolled up gym mat. It wasn't until last year, nine years later, that investigators released their final ruling, calling his death an accident. That may have ended it for law enforcement, but not for Kendrick's family and countless supporters. Well, after the ruling, I conducted an extended interview with Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk. I wanted to hear firsthand why he's so sure Kendrick was not murdered. And I sat down one on one with Kendrick's mother, Jackie Johnson, to find out why she is convinced he was. He was in the mat. They found him there. It's, you know, did it seem possible to you that that, that happened? No, it's, it's not possible that he can fall into a mat. It's, it's not even logical. No way that this could have happened. No. But they told you that, you know, so what did you do? What did you and your family do when they told you what was going on? And when they told us there, whatever you want to call it, um, we just began, you know, in fight mode. You know, we already know that this is a city that cover up stuff. It's a tragedy. It's a tragic thing what happened to the son. You never want to outlive your children. I hate it for Miss Johnson, Jackie, Jackie Johnson. I mean, so it's something that'll never go away, and there'll always be, no matter how much evidence on any case that's gone, there's going to be a little bit of doubt what happened to my son. And I realize that. But all I can do is the best I can do from the evidence I've got, and that's what I put out here, and that's what the evidence showed. They said Kendrick didn't have no bruises, there were no marks on Kendrick, but when we seen him, my God, how can you even, you know, state that on the news that he didn't have any bruises? First autopsy was GBI and it said positional asphyxiation accident. Unsatisfied with the results of the investigation, the Johnson family ordered a second autopsy and hired an independent pathologist. Approximately two years later, he was exhumed and um, it was a paid for autopsy by Dr. Anderson out of Florida, who um, worked with the Orange County a coroner's office at one time, I believe. I don't know. And um, he came back. There was blunt force trauma, I believe, to the neck. After the second autopsy, the U.S. Justice Department opened its own investigation into Kendrick's death. It also had an independent Department of Defense medical examiner to go through the physical evidence and both autopsies. In 2016, it ruled there was insufficient evidence to support criminal charges against anyone. What evidence is it that will make you feel better? The truth. Nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't want nothing, no extra, nothing. Around. I just want the truth and the facts about what happened to Kendrick Johnson. And what you can't tell me is my son was a murderer, period. Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk was not the sheriff when Kendrick Johnson died. He was elected as sheriff for a second time in 2016. Now, shortly after being elected, Polk asked the Justice Department for all of the materials in the case and did his own investigation. He closed the case a year ago, ruling Kendrick's death an accident. But where did things go so wrong between law enforcement and Kendrick's family? To understand that, we have to go back to the beginning to the night of January 10th, when Kendrick was first reported missing, and the next day when his body was discovered. On January 10th of 2013, the lives of the Johnson family changed forever when Kendrick did not show up after school. It was the first day of school after the holiday break. Jackie Johnson contacted law enforcement to help her locate her missing son. She says she was not satisfied with how they handled the initial call. Instead of them, you know, 
looking for Kendrick, the first thing the sheriff, would, the officer would say was he's probably out with some fast tail girl. And I was like, no, Kendrick knows that I don't play about school nights, period. The next day, January 11th, Kendrick's body was found in a rolled up gym mat by a class of students. Not knowing if Kendrick was alive or dead, the coach turned the gym mat from its upright position to the ground. When he was discovered, the coach went away and brought it down because they didn't know if, if he was deceased at the time or just still breathing. Authorities alerted Kendrick's family, but when his mother went to the school, she was not happy with what she saw. When I was sitting out there at the schoolhouse, they never locked the school down. Kids were walking all past me. Um, kids was passing by me crying. And it's, it's a shame that nothing was done as it should have been done. If this had been a black child at that school, that school would have been locked down. The school was locked down, but only for a short time. Students were kept at school to be interviewed to see if there were witnesses. Eventually, investigators issued a statement saying there was a possible homicide at the school. But there were no indications of foul play. The question became, how did Kendrick get into the gym mat? What has been explained to me that, that students would hide their expensive, what, tennis shoes, athletic shoes in the mats or near the mats? They would drop them down to the, the core of the mat. The mats are rolled up with a strap around them, so it leaves about a 14 to 16 inch hole, depends on what type mat it is, down the middle, hollow. During the holiday break, several gym mats were assembled vertically in the corner of the gym. They are roughly 700 pounds each. Investigators came to believe that Kendrick Johnson reached down for his shoes and became trapped upside down and suffocated. But his mother never believed that. How can you walk on, it's about five bleachers about this high, and then the mats about, you cannot even go over there and fall into a mat over there. Kendrick had to, lay, he was in the middle of mat, so you had to lay down and slide down. You mean to tell me you're going to slide and wiggle down in a mat when your shoulders are 17 and 19 inches wide and the mat was 14? It don't even make sense. If it had been an outside mat and he did that, he could have turned it over, but it's just by movement. You know, it would have, probably could have turned it over and it would have gone horizontal. And he wouldn't have been in a position where you would suffocate because positional asphyxiation is what it was. Police say no one saw Kendrick Johnson climb into the gym mat. And although there are several surveillance cameras in the school, not one was pointed at the area in question. Without that evidence, Kendrick's family developed their own theories. Well, I think my son was led in the gym, tricked in the gym, and he was ambushed, and he was beat. He was hit with the weight to get him down where they continued to beat him until he was unconscious. And then they put him in that mat. And then they rolled him up in that mat. Investigators have never been able to prove that theory either. But here we are, 10 years later, and Kendrick supporters still believe it. For the past week, Kendrick's family and friends have been celebrating what they call Kendrick's Angelversary. There were several events held in Kendrick's honor, and as WLV News 10's Mackenzie Petrie reports, many say they owe it to Kendrick to find out what really happened to him. In a March for Justice rally, people came from across the country to support Kendrick's family and to make a statement they have not forgotten. It's been 10 long hard years. And when I say hard years, hard years. The crowd get little and little, but I get stronger and stronger. But we made that us to know who we is. Cause y'all killed our child out there and it ain't gonna be okay. It wasn't okay in 2013, it ain't gonna be okay in 2090. Kendrick Johnson's sister, Kenyetta, held a sibling grief support group with others who have lost loved ones. I, I just thank you for doing this. I came all the way from Atlanta to support. I need to be here. I need to get it out because I just, I feel like I'm, I'm holding so much anger. Talk to someone. If it's just, it don't matter who it is, just talk to somebody. It's better to get it out than hold it in. For many, the events weren't just about giving support. 
many need to receive it. Our children deserve protection. Our children deserve justice, and they deserve to be um, recognized as valuable citizens. Could have been any one of our children. As long as they are fighting this, and I've got lungs, air in my lungs, I'm right there with them. The Johnson family thanks those who support them. They say they're not fearful and they're not going to back down. Mackenzie Petrie, WALB, your hometown news source. Race and mistrust have been at the heart of the Kendrick Johnson case from the beginning. After the break, the fallout after Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Park closed the case last year. He is a liar. He told penalized in a 16-page document. I live by my word. I'll, I'll die before I tell a lie. The mistrust led to multiple lawsuits. We'll tell you what legal action has been taken and might still lie ahead. Welcome back to our WALB news special, Kendrick Johnson, 10 years later. Over the last decade, there have been many lawsuits filed by and on behalf of Kendrick Johnson's family. July 2014, the Johnsons filed a lawsuit naming the Lowndes County School Board, the school superintendent, and the principal of Lowndes High School. In a $100 million civil lawsuit filed in January of 2015, the Johnson family alleged a massive conspiracy. The lawsuit accused brothers Brian and Brandon Bell in Kendrick's death. The courts ruled no evidence confirmed that. The two are forever linked to Kendrick Johnson's death online. You still believe that they beat up Kendrick, put him in that map? I do, because all the um, evidence points toward them. What about these boys? I mean, they've gone on down the road. I mean, I, like I tell everybody, I don't care about those boys. I just want the responsible party, and if, those, if that's where it is, I want those held accountable for what happened to Kendrick. The Johnson family's attorneys filed another lawsuit in August of 2016, naming 42 defendants, including members of the Lowndes Sheriff's Office and the GBI. A federal judge dismissed the lawsuit and ordered the Johnson family to pay legal fees. Mistrust of law enforcement. It's always been at the center of the Kendrick Johnson case. Those feelings are deep rooted for many in the black community. South Georgia has a painful racist history. And that could partly explain why it's hard for a black mother to accept the death of her son as an accident. When Sheriff Polk reopened the case in March of 2021, he said it was because he wanted to find the truth. He walked me through that process. And Jackie Johnson explained to me why those efforts did nothing to establish trust. He is a liar. He is a liar. He told penalized in a 16-page document. He told penalized, and my husband called him out on those lies. He says that there was no evidence in there. Yeah, of course, that's what he's going to say. Why do you think he would do that? Because he, he's allegedly part of the cover-up now. Don't call me a liar. You can call me a lot of names. You can call me a cracker. You can call me whatever you want to. You can call me any name in the book. A lot of them you can't put on TV. Mm -hmm. But don't call me a liar. The Lyons County Sheriff's Office closed the case in January of last year after a second investigation. Park says he personally went through 17 boxes of evidence. He says he spent a year going through all those papers and everything. Yeah, it was almost like seven or eight months, but there's no way. You got all these other cases going on. You, you, you took a whole year just to know. You can't put officers that were on the case that helped cover it up. You can't put them back on the case. You think they're gonna uncover what they covered up and uh, allegedly be, I mean, be prosecuted? They feel like I'm not doing my job. They feel like there's cover-ups and everything else. And that's their prerogative. That comes from my job. They said the case was being, the 17 boxes were being shipped to here, but then he took it down to it was 15 boxes, then he said it wasn't but allegedly 14 boxes. After reviewing the evidence, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office determined there was no evidence indicating someone else was involved with Kendrick's death. Sheriff Polk was so confident in the ruling, he offered $500,000 of his own money as a reward 
for evidence that found Kendrick's killer. Are you also hopeful that somebody will walk through that door and, and, and tell you that, hey, I know something about this case and it's legitimate and that would be the incentive, that, that uh, reward. If it cost me a half million dollars, it wouldn't bother me one bit. If it takes that to get somebody to tell me something that I don't know or I didn't see in those files, it's worth it. It's worth it to me. I just felt like that was just a whole slap in the face, especially when this, this goes against what you just said. You said in your report, you was a, and on news, you was 100% sure this was a weird accident. Then come back four days later, because my husband called you out on all your lies on national news, and then you, they put up a reward. You, you looking stupider than you already look. I don't tolerate it. You can throw a bottle of water on me, and make, you won't make me as mad if you told me a lie. And I live by my word, and I've always done that. But I have so much confidence in, in my relationship with the community, any part of the community, African American or whatever else, I never wore a gun. I don't wear a gun anywhere. I don't wear a gun because I tell new sheriffs, and I've been doing this, this is my sixth term, you can run a sheriff's office on two phrases, three words, common sense and compassion. We have spent a lot of time focused on the investigation into Kendrick Johnson's death and the fallout afterward. But after the break, we remember the person who was Kendrick Johnson. He's my son and I love him. You know, even after death, I'm going to continue to love him. For the past decade, we have kept you updated on the Kendrick Johnson case, but we know little about who he was. Just ahead, more about his life and impact. Ten years after his death, Kendrick Johnson symbolizes many things for many people. Teen tragedy for some, murder mystery for others. We've seen his picture countless times. We've heard all the theories and reports, but many likely still don't know. Who was Kendrick Johnson? WALB News 10's Alicia Lewis got the answer from those closest to him. Kendrick Johnson was many things to many people. Most described him to be a great friend, athlete, son, and sibling. The legacy he leaves continues to live on 10 years later. Johnson's family described Kendrick as a self-starter and motivator to all. He left behind a legacy of wanting to be the best and striving to perfection. And I believe that if you put your heart into any um, capacity towards a goal, that you'll actually reach it, and that's what he was about. Even at the age of 17, he inspired his peers to stay on the right path and to follow their dreams. His mother described his personality as soft-spoken but could light up any room. And I'm so proud of him for being the child that he was. He didn't have to be pushed to go to school. He never said he wanted to drop out of school. He was glad to go because he had his goals already set in life to go to college and then one day become an NFL player. So I am still so proud. For me, you're my NFL player in heaven. Kendrick Johnson was an athlete. He played football, basketball, and track. Everyone I spoke with told me they believe his talent would have taken him far. I remember when he was smiling, when he used to play football or something, he could get mad when they lose. <laughs> he could be mad when they lose. Just, just miss him so much. So you can't hardly put it in the words how you really miss him. The family tells me they will continue to fight for justice and celebrate his life for years to come. His legacy will continue in spirit. Alicia Lewis, WAOB, your hometown news source. It has been 10 long years since the passing of Kendrick Johnson. Throughout this special, we've seen how the Johnson family has kept his memory alive and how they continue to advocate for him. I keep trying to tell him we ain't going nowhere. We're gonna fight until somebody is held accountable. Just ahead, how the Johnson family will continue fighting for justice no matter how long it takes. And what about the future of his case? No matter what you believe about the Kendrick Johnson case, you have to respect why some people feel how they feel. Kendrick Johnson's mother, many others still believe the truth has not come out. And even though the case is closed, Sheriff Polk told me he is willing to reopen it. I'm not just fight for kids, I'm fight for other kids 
that this never happens to another family, that they don't have to suffer the way me and my husband suffer on a daily basis. We don't get a break from suffering. The Johnson family has been fighting for justice for Kendrick for a decade now. Jackie Johnson has taken Kendrick's story to the popular app TikTok, where she not only advocates for Kendrick, but also other victims in national unsolved cases. His name is Orenzo Dai, a.k.a. Noodle, and he was unalived last year. Nowadays they just talk, but they talk about nothing. Now I'm asking you if you've seen her in the Houston, Texas area, please reach out to me, call the police, let them know. Johnson's TikTok account has amassed over 250,000 followers. Even though Kendrick's case is closed and has been ruled an accident, Sheriff Ashley Polk says that he would reopen the case if new evidence is uncovered. If they're in that lobby waiting on me right now to get through this interview, and they tell me they've got some viable evidence, I'm going to put them in the same chair you and I'm going to listen to the evidence. And if they give me some evidence that I feel like is viable and truthful, the case is open. I'm going to look at it. Without a doubt. For now, the Johnson family will continue to fight in Kendrick's memory. We're going to fight until somebody is held accountable because there's no such thing as justice. Justice means my child being here with me. That's not going to happen. And that's not going to happen. So we'll never have justice. But what we have is accountability of what happened to Kendrick. Just because we come up with a conclusion doesn't mean we're always right. You never know. You don't ever quit. And like I say, no case is ever closed, in my opinion. I will fight them to the day I die about my child. And I like I always tell them, you killed the wrong child, but y'all got the right parents because we're not going nowhere. The Kendrick Johnson case is one we've been covering from the start. And it's our promise to you to keep following any new developments. We thank you for watching this special half hour of WALB News 10.